Hi everyone, my name is Stan. Together with three other students from Tier Delft, we developed a tool to perform a statistical analysis of two-line element data. In this video, I will guide you through, through the functionalities of the tool and show how the tool works in practice. The tool will be open source with the GitHub link in the description of the video. And to use it, you need a 2016b version of MATLAB or later. The first thing you need to do to run a tool is simply open the main script that is present in the TLE analysis folder. The tool has two main functionalities. The first one is to detect whether the satellite has thrust, impulsive or continuous, and the second one is to analyze residuals between TLE observations and propagated Kepler elements using SGP4. After opening the main, you run it by pressing F5. Then, a graphical user interface shows up, which requires several input parameters. The first input contains the NORAD IDs of the satellites that the user would like to analyze. You can add as many NORAD IDs as you want, but make sure you separate them by using a comma. For this tutorial, we will use the Delphi C3 satellite, which has no thrust, Envisat, which has impulsive thrust, and an Iridium satellite, which has continuous thrust. The second entry requires a 0 or a 1. If you are sure that all your satellites do not have thrust, put in 0, and otherwise 1. The result of this is that the data of your satellites will be used to improve the thrust detection algorithm by including its statistics in a file used by the code. The third entry simply toggles the output of figures. The fourth entry can be used to remove a certain percentage of the initial data of the TLE observations. This is to ensure that the injection of the satellite is removed. The fifth entry should be kept to the default value. It specifies how conservative the thrust detection algorithm is. The value of 1.05 showed the most accurate results for thrust detection performed by us. By decreasing this value, the tool will detect thrust more easily, and by increasing it, it will detect it less often. The sixth entry is used in the thrust detection algorithm. It specifies the time between two thrust impulses to be considered as one or multiple maneuvers. If there are two thrust maneuvers separated by less than a specified amount of days, it will be considered as one maneuver. The seventh entry relates to the error analysis. The tool automatically reads the TLE data of the selected satellites, then an SGP4 propagator propagates the initial observed TLE ephemeris to the next TLE observation. At this next step, the propagator uses again the observed TLE as the new initial condition for propagation. If this value is 1, the propagation is done between two successive TLE observations. If it is 2, propagation is done between the first TLE observation and the third one as it skips one intermediate TLE observation and so on. All in all, by increasing this value, more steps can be skipped before reinitializing the propagation with the observed TLE data. Finally, the last entry toggles the application of a Chauvinet criterion to the data. This criterion is used to remove outliers from the observed data and the residuals between the observed TLE data and the propagated ones. Since some of our satellites use thrust, we're gonna set this criterion to zero to not remove the thrust maneuvers themselves. Then you can simply press OK to run the rest of the script. Now another user interface shows up. If it is the first time that you use this program, the user interface will ask you for a username and password for the spacetrack.org website. This will automatically download the required TLE files from the website. After entering OK, the downloading will start. This can take a while. After pressing OK, the program is executed and the observation range is outputted in the shell along with a notification whether thrust was detected or not. Along with this information, several plots are generated. So first, let's look at the shell. Clearly, downloading takes quite a while. So please have patience while executing the program. All the three satellites that we inputted are successfully analyzed. And for all three satellites, it was correctly analyzed which type of thrust it had or if it had no thrust at all. As you can see, the Delphi C3 satellite has no thrust, the Envisat satellite has impulsive thrust, and the Iridium satellite has continuous thrust. So we verified for a small part are the thrust detection algorithm. Now we take a look at the plots. We will show them for the case of Envisat. The first plot presents the observed Kepler elements of all satellites in one plot. Since the selected satellites are very different in this case, also the plots are very different, as you can see. 
The second figure shows a histogram of the update rate of the DLE observations. The third figure shows where trust is detected for the case of Envisat. As you can see, this is between 3000 and 3500 days. The fourth figure shows both the observations and the propagated Kepler elements in one figure. And the last figure shows the difference in Kepler elements between the propagated elements and the observed ones. Finally, the user can also access the data saved in the workspace, which contains the correlations between the residuals and Kepler elements, the observed and propagated Kepler elements, and the statistics of the residuals. Thank you for watching this video. Place any question you have in the comment section below. We would like to thank Prem for the supervision and support during the project, and Paul for providing us with the SGP4 propagator.